Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an exponential equation. We have i times e to the power negative iz equals 1 and we're going to be solving for z values. I'm going to be presenting two methods and should we start with the first one? Sure, let's do that. Now we have i times e to the negative iz equals 1. This expression as, uh, is actually something well known. Hopefully you know what it is. But if you didn't, we can go ahead and find out what that's going to look like. Because that's something that you'll see time to time. So it will be helpful if you knew this identity. So I hope you know the Euler's formula or the polar form for a complex number, which is e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. This kind of looks like that, doesn't it? With slight changes. So here's what we're going to do. If you replace theta with negative theta, this is unchanged, but sine of negative theta is going to be negative sine of theta. By the way, that's also going to be the conjugate of e to the i theta. So let's go ahead and find out. Since e to the power of negative i z can be written as cosine of z minus i sine of z, hence the conjugate of cosine z plus i sine z equals 1, we can go ahead and do this. Let's just distribute the i. We get i cosine z minus i squared sine z equals 1. Again, we're not multiplying both sides by i. We're just distributing the i. Make sense? Okay, make no mistake. Now, i squared is negative 1. Hopefully you know that. That's the most important part of complex numbers. And this becomes i cosine z plus sine z equals 1. Or I can write it as sine z plus i cosine z equals 1. This is the identity I was talking about. So anytime you see something like i times e to the negative iz, you can think of sine z plus i cosine z. Wait a minute, with Euler's formula, didn't you say it's cosine theta first? Yes, the real part is cosine, imaginary part is sine. But it's switched. So what do we do? We use the co-function. Hmm. If two angles are complementary, like alpha and beta, then sine alpha is cosine beta. Makes sense? So we can basically turn sine z into the cosine of its complement, which is pi over 2 minus z, right? And the same thing for cosine. Of course, I'm, gonna, I'm, supposed, I'm supposed to write it as sine of pi over 2 minus z, right? Think about it like cosine 60, sine 30, or cosine 10 is the same as sine 80 degrees, so on and so forth. That's what we can do. And we're doing this conversion because we want to put it in this format, cosine theta plus i sine theta. We don't want it to, uh, to be the other way around. Make sense? Now, this is our theta, basically, right? So in other words, that's our argument. So based on Euler's formula, we can write this as e to the i theta or e to the i times pi over 2 minus z. All right? Awesome. And of course, we want this to be 1. Isn't that cool? Now, to be able to solve this, we're going to complexify 1. So we can basically multiply both sides by e to the power 2 pi and i. Right? And then we can just natural log both sides, so on and so forth. Or you can actually completely turn this into e to the power 2 pi and i because that's what it becomes. And then from here, we can align both sides, bring these down, so on and so forth, and look at the equation that way. So we're going to end up with i times pi over 2 minus z equals 2 pi and i. And now, i isn't 0, as far as I know. We can cross them out. And our goal is to solve for z, remember. Not for n. n is an integer, by the way. I forgot to say that. I apologize. n is an integer, okay? Because 2 pi n is a multiple of 2 pi. So in the argon plane, that represents 1 because its unit, its distance is 1 unit. And the argument is going to be 0 or 2 pi or any multiple of 2 pi. Make sense? Awesome. So we got this equation and we're solving for z. Fairly easy, right? Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to add z to both sides. 
and then subtract 2 pi n. So z can be written as, by the way, I don't have to switch sides because in the previous video, actually in the other, in the video that I did, made out the, at the other channel, I did it that way. So let's go ahead and do it that way too. Subtract 2 pi n, and that will be the answer. n is an integer, so I might as well just replace negative n with something like k, which is also an integer, and write the z as pi over 2 plus 2 pi k, where k is negative n or k is just an integer. Since n is arbitrary, k is also arbitrary. Make sense? So this would be the answer in general form, which means our number is actually like a real number, right? Z is real, isn't it? Okay, can you believe that? For example, if k is 0, z is going to be pi over 2. If k is 1, so on and so forth, you can find the answer. But if you plug in pi over 2 into the equation, you're going to realize something interesting. Let's do it i e to the power negative i z and now since we know that z is pi over 2 pi over 2 multiply by e to the power negative i pi over 2 and then from here what do you think you're going to get e to the power negative i pi over 2 you can kind of write it in standard form uh, and find the value that way and then from there uh, you should be able to simplify this okay anyways now let's go ahead and Take a look at the second method. All right. So for the second method, let me start with the original problem. I times e to the negative i z equals 1. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply both sides by negative i. You could also divide by i, which is the same thing, by the way. I mean, let's do it. No big deal. Divide by i. And then you end up with this. But then you want to, you know, Turn this into something nicer, multiply by negative i, and this becomes e to the negative i z, e to the negative i z equals, this becomes 1 because negative i squared, and this becomes negative i. Now, how do you solve this? Here's one thing we can do, definitely it's going to help. We can conjugate both sides. If you conjugate both sides, it's going to be true, and this will become e to the i z, and this will become positive i. But how do you write i in polar form? You can write it as e to the power i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi m. m is an integer. You can write it that way because the argument for i is pi over 2. And from here, z becomes pi over 2 plus 2 pi m, where m is an integer. Make sense? All right. And... This should bring us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.